Blake Griffin, one of the most forgotten former superstars in the NBA, Griffin has had a very tough career filled with injuries, a short prime derailed his abilities. Now viewed as just an average player stuck on a bad team on a heavy contract, the 31 year old has drastically slowed down and continues to get hampered by pain, his body breaking down, the beginning of the end might be near. How's it going guys, my name's Wilson, Griffin after signing a 5 year $173 million deal in 2017 with the Clippers, ended up with Detroit, has a player option of nearly 39 million for 2022, will make over 200 mil for his career nowadays on one of the worst team, but let's remember how great prime Blake Griffin was, there was a reason why the former number one pick was consensus, well over the likes of James Harden and Steph Curry, other superstars in his draft, any team with the first pick would have taken Griffin without hesitation, viewed as once in a generational type talent with unlimited all time great superstar potential, Griffin just like other number one picks near his time, the likes of LeBron James, John Wall and Anthony Davis were all guaranteed to go one without question, after two spectacular seasons at the University of Oklahoma, off the charts athletic abilities, super fast, dominant on the glass and strong, Griffin had all the tools to become one of the best power forwards of his generation, a guy who can run the floor like a point guard at 6'9", 6'10", underrated passer, good vision, has the jump hook, only lacked a consistent jumper, long and aggressive, the Naismith College Basketball Player of the Year, averaged 23 and 14 before declaring for the loaded draft, missed his entire rookie season, undergoing knee surgery, people joke about Ben Simmons being too old winning rookie of the year, Tyreek Evans won it when Blake was out, but finally 100%, Griffin showed the world what he was made of, instantly became a star in his very first game, a slam dunk to begin his career, on a roster with Aaron Gordon, Chris Kamen, Mo Williams and Eric Bledsoe, a 20.14 rebound debut, in fact, Blake was so popular, his highlights would be shown all over the place, people in 2020 talk about Zion's rookie season and his highlights, but already forgotten, Blake Griffin in 2010 had the same amount of hype, just social media wasn't as big then, despite his team not winning much, Blake was throwing crazy dunks, jamming on guys left and right, one of the best athletes, even became the first rookie all star since Tim Duncan, participated in the dunk contest and won, crashed the glass relentlessly, posted a regular season best, 47 points against the Pacers, a 27 game double double streak, the first unanimous rookie of the year winner since David Robinson, John Wall was the first pick after Blake, but wasn't even close to sniffing the award, Griffin averaged nearly 23 points, over 12 rebounds, 4 assists, played all 82 games as a 21 year old, given those numbers, his first full season, you would think he would be on his way to become a top 5 player, but Griffin would never come close to averaging as many rebounds, never grab more than 11 a game after his rookie season, the most celebrated and praised rookie in the discussion with Shaq's and Duncan's rookie season, after Chris Paul's veto Laker trade, sent to the Clippers, appeared to be a match made in heaven, that's how the Clippers Lob City identity came to existence, the Lakers also getting old at the time, there was a narrative, the Clippers were gonna be the team of LA, Paul one of the best players in the game, 26 years old, Griffin's front court made DeAndre Jordan slowly improve, Karan Butler, Randy Ford and Nick Young bound to make some noise, Griffin the second option in the 66 game season, shot 55% from the field, his numbers nearly 21 and 10, not surprising it was down, having Paul on the team successful enough to make second team all NBA, become an all star starter, most memorable for his nasty insane monster dunk, absolutely destroying, abusing, annihilating and humiliating Kendrick Perkins in one of the best posters of the decade, absolutely nasty, CP3 the best point guard in the league, finished third in MVP voting, Blake played ok his first playoff series against Memphis, 18 points, 6 and a half boards, but got a taste of his own medicine against 36 year old Duncan, got stuffed badly at the rim in game 3, Paul wasn't 100%, Averaged just 13 points, Parker Duncan and Manu overwhelmed the Clippers in a sweep, Griffin then signed an extension, 5 years 95 million before 2013, selected to compete for Team USA but removed after injuring his knee, the Clippers were bound to go even further, in Blake's third full season, flourishing his all around game, improved handles, blows by guys one on one, also developing his mid range jumper at the time, put on a show every night, those put back dunks were nasty, at the height of his athleticism, Blake surprised surprisingly wasn't known for his shot blocking or defense, given his leaping ability, but absolutely denied, cancelled, rejected, stuffed, and abolished Darren Williams at the rim at Barkley Center, one of the nastiest blocks I ever seen, Blake also capable of putting triple double numbers some night, CP the face of the team, averaged 17 points, 10 dimes, 2.5 steals, 4 for MVP, Griffin only played 32.5 minutes, averaged just 
first 18 points, 8 and a half boards, but absolutely struggled and underachieved in the playoffs. Got bullied by the physical Zach Randolph. Zebo also didn't want to hear about Griffin's injury excuses. Average just 13 and 5, lost 4 straight to Memphis after being up 2 0, had an ankle injury in game 5, a non factor, 4 points, 5 boards. Paul dropped 35 in the loss. Blake limited to 14 points in game 6, a lesser talented team, more physical. Randolph accused Griffin and the Clippers of being flappers. Those Memphis Clippers series would have gotten a million fouls in today's NBA. Game 6 extremely physical. After the series, Griffin was labeled soft. Randolph also took a shot, saying OKC's Big Perk and Serge Ibaka are tough, tougher than the Clippers, and tougher than Blake. The first time Griffin faced real adversity in the NBA, but to his credit, kept his cool throughout the series. He only got physically tough one time when he punched a Clipper equipment staff in the face in 2016. Come 2013-14 season, at the very prime of his career, team hire head coach Doc Rivers, CP3 missed 20 regular season games, Griffin took matters into his own hands, averaged 24 points, almost 10 rebounds, 4 assists, 53% shooting, his handles and passing on full display, the spin moves, the chemistry with D. DJ on point, 57 wins, good for the third seed, the 24 year old was safe to label as a superstar, finished third place in MVP voting, behind only Kevin Durant and LeBron James. Most teenagers today probably can't even imagine Blake Griffin being labeled in the same sentence as KD and LBJ for the entire season because of the injuries to Kobe, Carmelo and D. Rose, Steph Curry and James Harden weren't elite elite yet, still up and coming, Griffin was arguably a top 5 player in the game then, was so good for over a two month span, recorded 20 plus points in 31 straight games. The only reason why Blake didn't make first team all NBA because of KD and LeBron, two of the very best in the game, also plays forward. Joe Kim Noah made it as a center, Griffin second team as the best power forward in the league over the likes of Kevin Love and LaMarcus Aldridge. As of 2020, only two Clippers ever made first team all NBA, ever since the Bob McAdoo brave days. Over the last 45 years, Chris Paul's one of them, and shockingly, Blake Griffin was the other. It's actually former teammate DeAndre Jordan because the center position was a joke in 2016. Forwards were loaded with talent. The biggest absolute travesty of them all, somebody who was never a top 20 player in the league making first team. I'll rant about it in the future video. You won't want to miss that. Take away positions. Griffin was easily a top 5 player in 2014. Being just 24 years old, if healthy, many thought Griffin might have had the chance to become the best player in the league after LeBron. At the time, if you were to ask NBA X who they rather build around for the next 8 years, Griffin, Harden, or Curry, many would absolutely have said Griffin. The more accomplished player at that point, Blake outplayed Curry in 2014 first round, averaged over 23 a game, had an insane and one clutch layup in game 7 with a minute left to close out that series. LAC got outplayed by Westbrook and Durant in the semis. It was Paul responsible for blowing game 5 up 13 with 4 minutes left, an epic meltdown. 2015 was championship or bust, 25 years young, it seemed like Blake had plenty of time to take over the league, but missed 15 games due to a stab infection in his elbow, an underwhelming 22 points, under 8 rebounds, over 5 assists, still made his 4th straight All-NBA appearance, 56 wins, tied with the Rockets, the previous year, Blake was the healthy star, this time, it was Paul who played all 82 games, a team with JG Redick, Jamal Crawford, DJ, Matt Barnes, and young Austin Rivers, it was absolutely unfair. There. The Clippers and the defending champion Spurs matched up in the first round. The East was a complete joke outside of LeBron. Having two top contenders play round one when three playoff teams in the East finished 500 and below, the six seeded Spurs won 55 games. The six seed for the joke East, 41 wins. Are you kidding me? San Antonio would have been second in the East. The Clippers and Spurs good enough for a conference finals matchup. Griffin and Duncan, the battle of the heavyweights, went back and forth. Both had their moments. The 39 year old stood toe to toe with the young fella, Griffin lots of slam dunks and big plays, even registered back to back triple doubles in the series, rounded his overall skill, unselfish, mixed plays for everybody, at the time Blake and CP were neck and neck, after getting slapped 3 years ago by the same Spurs, outside the 2, no other clipper averaged over 14 a game against San Antonio, big triple double game 7, needed every bit of it, San Antonio still a serious threat in 2015, from then on, some believed the clippers had a real chance at winning the title 
title, overcoming their demons, but sadly, because they're the Clippers, lost in the most brutal, unimaginable way possible. Griffin arguably played his best basketball, first five games of the Houston series, absolutely destroyed, abused, annihilated, and humiliated Dwight Howard and Terrence Jones. His defining moments with the Clippers did whatever he wanted, whenever he wanted, also outplayed James Harden for the entire series. To this day, it's an absolute travesty. The Clippers blew game six to John Smith and Corey Brewer. Absolutely pathetic coaching by Doc Rivers. Up 19 in the third and couldn't close it out with Harden on the bench, blowing the 3-1 lead to find the Lop City era. Many forget Griffin averaged 26, 13, and 6 that postseason, played the best basketball out of anybody the first two rounds. If the Clippers didn't choke, I honestly believe they would have had a chance against young Golden State, would have been a compelling series and closer than the Houston Golden State matchup. And if the Clips won that, would have matched up against a depleted Cleveland team in the finals, Blake Griffin's entire career would have been viewed differently if he was able to win a title or a finals MVP with the Clippers franchise. After two devastating playoff exits, Griffin 26, Paul 30 years old, DeAndre Jordan in his prime, it didn't seem like the championship window was closing, but the injury sadly derailed Blake forever, suited up just 35 games in 2016, 21 and a half points, 8 boards, 5 assists, a toward quad, then a right hand injury after punching his equipment manager. From that point forward, his stock fell drastically, aggravating his left quad in game 4 versus Portland. Paul broke his hand, both out after game 4, lost 5 and 6. Blake's athleticism started slowly to decline. Golden State added Durant that offseason, officially giving the Clippers zero chance. Blake and CP both missed 21 regular season games in 2017. His usual 21 and a half points, 8 rebounds, 5 assist numbers, yet another untimely injury in Game 3 vs Utah, this time his right toe. No longer viewed as a top 10 player, the Clippers franchise gave him 5 years 173. Paul traded to Houston, 28 years old, Blake was supposed to be in the prime of his career then, but those injuries slowed him down, became more of a point forward, changed his game completely, developed an outside jumper, no longer a supreme athlete in the NBA, a 21-7-6 guy, blindsided when traded to the Pistons, a struggling franchise who was desperate. Griffin was too injury prone at the time. Looking back at the stack 2009 class, as Curry and Harden both won MVPs and became top 5 players in the game consistently, Griffin gave us another glimpse of greatness in the 2019 season. Averaged a career best 24.5 points, 7.5 boards, 5.5 assists, attempted 7 threes, played 75 games. Also, the fact that the pace in the NBA was faster than previous years led the Pistons to the 8th seed with a weak supporting cast outside of Andre Drummond. Blake's starting point guard, Reggie Inefficient Jackson, had Bruce Brown, Reggie Bullock, little to no help, gave us a 50 point game, a triple double dread. Imagine if Blake had his 2019 all around skills, the outside shot, the passing abilities, plus the 2014 athleticism, Griffin would have been up there as one of the very best players. Once again, hurt at the wrong time, and not a knee injury before the playoffs. Missed the first two games against Milwaukee, played on one leg, swept, missed the first 10 games of next season. Only played 18 games, another surgery on that left knee, now stuck in no man's land, Blake Griffin's NBA career appears to be coming to an end sooner than expected. I'm not saying he'll retire before 2023, his rim attacking days long gone, the 6 time all-stars future remains uncertain as of early 2021. After his Detroit days, nobody knows how effective he will be, perhaps he can be a useful role player when he enters his mid 30s in age, not much optimism at the latter stages of his career. Hard to imagine imagine any team trading for him soon. One Blake Griffin moment that stood out to me, shaking hands with every member of the press and thanking them for their services. After being eliminated in the 2019 playoffs, a kind gesture, as we're already more than a year and a half into the new decade, only the ones who's watched Blake Griffin ball out in the mid-2010s knows how great he really was and what he could have been if it wasn't for those injuries. Griffin, in my opinion, the most athletic power forward I ever seen, had all the talents to be in the same class as a Charles Barkley, Kevin Garnett, Dirk Nowitzki. But will end up as one of those number one picks, similar to a Chris Webber, a near guarantee sure thing to be a superstar generational talent before being drafted, but injury slowed him down. Hopefully, Griffin will have a few more productive basketball seasons left, be able to join a contender as a role player to end his career. When we inch towards the end of the 
20s decade, the real discussions and debates about Blake Griffin, will he become a future Hall of Famer given his success in a short span? What are your thoughts on Blake's NBA career? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. Subscribe for more content, more good stuff coming soon. I love all of you. See you next time.